Hi everybody, this is Gary Fong, and I am here with my friend Neil Manowitz, who is the Vice President of uh, Sony Digital Imaging. Nice to see you again, Neil, as always. Great to see you, thank you so much for being here. Today. So, um, when we first met at Photokina in Germany, I think it was you had just come on, and you were the product manager for Alpha. Underneath your watch, I saw the A6000 turn into the number one interchangeable lens camera in history, is that true? It, it was, so it was really amazing what happened with the A6000. We, we launched it and it had the world's fastest autofocus at the time. And when we marketed it, we, we talked all about this great focusing. And when we talked to photographers, when we talked to videographers, actually the feedback from them was so astonishing in the fact that they loved the autofocus, but actually all of the key elements really it hit on. Right, and I think a lot of that really came because of mirrorless. Um, one of the things that I noticed was Sony made a huge commitment to mirrorless, and they were the only ones that, uh, that really gambled that much. I mean, threw everything into mirrorless, and, um, and now everyone's playing catch-up. So why did Sony make, make such a big uh, gamble? So what, what we consistently do at Sony is really focus on the customer. So if we start our, our focus there, we're really not thinking about what all the other manufacturers are doing or just trying to keep our, or chase after everybody else. But by focusing on that customer, we can provide them experiences that haven't been done before, which leads to a variety of different technologies and, for example, mirrorless. Right. And one of the benefits of mirrorless, I remember when it first came out, one of the key phrases was DSLR quality in a compact size. And when mirrorless started to take over, now it's not about compact size. In fact, when you look at the G Master series of lenses, those things are bigger than a lot of the DSLR sized lenses. So we've gone away from uh, the compact uh, value proposition into sheer straight out performance. Sony has the fastest autofocus in the world with A6300, highest ISO sensitivity with the uh, A7S II. Uh, biggest megapixel, finest image quality with the uh, A7R2, and now, of course, the G Master lenses, which have uh, the most excellent performance. But these are big, big cameras, I mean, big lenses that you're attaching to them. So we're away from um, compact now, and we're into performance. What do you uh, attribute the uh, mirrorless in terms of uh, performance uh, benefits? So if we, if we think about starting from that customer's perspective. Then if we work backwards, we can think about by integrating a whole bunch of new technology, new um, innovation, we can add all this great benefits. So for example, using an electronic viewfinder where you can have zebra, you can have um, focus peaking, and all these great benefits that, that get attributed, you can, you can um, provide that in a camera in one great small compact body. And from a marketing perspective, when we talk about it being smaller and lighter, really the consumer, the end user, the photographer, videographer, they all really want the best picture quality. Right. So if all we're doing is really just saying it's smaller and lighter, it, it, it's not going to after what they really, really want. What they want is a better picture. So if we start with, let's provide a better experience, let's provide a better camera, then the fact if it's smaller and lighter, that just adds more benefit. So the fact that an A7 is such a small, compact body in terms of a full frame camera, that's really becomes the, the, the icing on the cake. But mm -hmm. the starting point really is around providing a better picture quality, better image quality, better experience for that, for that photographer video. And also shooting performance because you're able to focus directly onto the sensor. So your things like eye autofocus or subject tracking, uh, like for example the 6300 has 429 autofocus points covering almost the entire picture bed and the other DSLRs I have, you know, they've got just kind of like the center third and a smaller number of, uh, of picture points. So the ability to actually do, for example, face recognition right on the sensor, that's kind of cool. Um, and that to me I think was one of the features that really made the mirrorless is that, and then plus the electronic viewfinder. Once I got in the electronic viewfinder, I didn't want to shoot optical anymore. So I'm shooting, you know, like inside a wedding or dark room, I can barely see through that optical thing, but it amps up the signal in the electronic viewfinder. So now let's talk about cinema, because one of the things that I, I think has been so exciting is hearing the adoption of the A7S II into the cinema world. And one thing nice about me now being in Hollywood is that I have access to all of the best directors and, and producers. And the buzz for the A7S II has been pretty tremendous. And anybody that I talk to, 
is really a fan of the A7S II. So where do you think that, uh, that adulation comes from? So the world of, of still imaging and video imaging are, are moving more and more uh, together every day. So we see the, the speed of these cameras, the capabilities of these cameras is really just it is creating this blur between the, the traditional still world and the, and the video world. And the second thing we're seeing is that with the advancements of the, the technology, we're seeing what traditionally has been a consumer product, being able to produce quality images in both the video and, and the still imaging world, uh, something that, that was unattainable at any price in the past. So now from a content creator's perspective, it, it just opens up the door to a wide variety of, of opportunities. And a wider population, because now with the price point of say the A7S II, you've got a much, much lower price than something like say uh, Ari or, or uh, Red. Um, and that brings in a lot more filmmakers. Well, let's talk about quality because that's one of the things that we wanted to really experiment when I brought, I proposed the Sony A7S II to John Baldacci, uh, who just made a feature film using all Sony A7 series. And uh, tell, me, tell me your feedback on the quality and, and the sensor performance. So with, with the sensor, especially on the A7S Mark II, we hear consistently is that, that you can capture images that you could just never have before in the past. So for still image, Im imaging, what you can do is you can bump up that ISO and, and capture these images in the middle of, of night. They say it turns, it, it overexposes night. Um, right. And for the, for the filmmaker, it's, it's also an amazing um, capture in, in, terms of, in terms of quality, but also it's a cost saving. So not only is the, is the cost of the camera coming down, but also now you don't have to hire the lighting crew and all of the, the things that go around it. So what we're able to do is, is really, um, it's been talked about this democratization of, of filmmaking. The ability to now create a, a film for, for a fraction of the cost of, of what was traditionally done. Absolutely. One of the things when I told John Baldecci about the A7S II and we sent him one to play with, he said, you know, what's really great about shooting under moonlight is that the light doesn't change with clouds and things like that. It's a continuous spectrum. You crank up that ISO, it'll look like daylight at two in the morning. And when you're able to do that, then it doesn't mean you need a police to rope off Westwood Boulevard to shoot that scene, which then dramatically cuts your cost down. So now that you know that about cinema, what would you, uh, what are you safe to say in terms of Sony's uh, interest or investment into really penetrating Hollywood and kind of shaking up that Red and Alexa standard? So I think uh, Sony makes a wide variety of cameras and that's one of the, the great things about, uh, about Sony is that with, with this broad range of, of products like F65 or FS5, and even the A7, you can take all of these various cameras and, and bring them together and with technologies like S-Log, you can marry, marry those up so that you can have this amazing image and a, an amazing film that you output using a variety of different cameras and depending upon the situation, you pick the right tool for you. Right, so a lot of the buzz uh, is really centered around the A7S II and it's probably because of the light sensitivity. Why would somebody choose, outside of price, because the FS series is quite a bit more expensive, why would someone choose the, uh, the S2, A7S II series? So th there, there's really a variety of different reasons why different um, tools are, are used at different times. So obviously for the A7S II, there's, there's a size element, there, there's also a sensor size. So by using a full frame sensor, you have beautiful bouquet, you have the sensitivity, there's a lot of things that, that come along with it. But then on the professional side, you have different codecs, you have uh, also other fun function and features that you can add in mm -hmm. that wouldn't be integrated into a product like the A7S. Right, right. So Sony makes, of course, being probably the standard for broadcast, you know, any, any sports event or any uh, studio situation, Sony is the standard. So it makes all of the monitors and the sound gear and everything like that, right? So it, it kind of puts you in a perfect position to really invade Hollywood. It, it's uh, definitely an area of deep focus for us and, and we continue to focus on, on that end user and, and how we can provide them so that they ultimately they can provide better and better um, output. Right, and also Sony has kind of a really cool distribution uh, options, right? Because you, we've got, um, you've got Crackle, you've got PlayStation, you've got, of course, Sony Columbia. And um, so any of the content creators now probably will have a, a lot of options for going video on demand, streaming or whatever through Sony channels.
Definitely. I think from a from the content creator side, there's never been a better time to be around. You, you have more and more devices with, with more and more creativity coming. But then conversely is on the output side is the ways you can get your content distributed. The, the ability for you to then share that content, it's never been a better time. One thing I noticed too is that Sony is very heavy on a 4K standard commitment. Even my Xperia phone has 4K and your action cam has 4K. So of course you're the leader in 4K. And this is one thing that we noticed about Sony before is they like to build uh, walled gardens like they tried it before with, hand, um, what was it, the mini disc and, and, and the memory stick and things like that. Now, rather than forcing a standard, you're actually doing it by being the best at 4K. Yeah, I, th I think we're definitely focusing on that and that customer. So from whether it's from the capture side or from the display side or anything in between, really want to figure out how do we provide that best experience so that it's best, most creative experience on the, on the capture side, but then this immersive technology that, that you can really enjoy it from the, the actual viewing of, of the content. I think I'm, I'm envisioning a future where the workflow is really quite seamless. Uh, one can maybe film a movie at a very low cost and then through, uh, you know, the content creators can do that and then through your distribution channels really kind of keep everything within a Sony kind of a world. I think it's a, it's a great time to be around. And it's interesting too because a lot of the uh, interest on Sony uh, digital imaging products is of course around the stills. Because you guys have really killed that. It's undisputed that you're the leader in, in autofocus, sensitivity and image quality. But you know, I discovered as well as other filmmakers that it is potentially the leader in cinema which is, is it's a non-compromising thing. And I think that's what's really interesting about FML. Is FML the first time that, that it's been used only Sony? Because you work closely with FML. Yeah, so, so being a part of, of that project is really, really exciting. And it, it really is, is breaking ground in so many ways from the, the content capture side, obviously, with, with the A7 and, and, and from that, but also the, the concept of the, of the movie itself and the distribution path. It really is, is breaking ground in, in, in just ways that, that we didn't think were possible year, a few years ago. Right, yeah, it's so interesting, right? Because it, you're gonna content create and you're gonna straight on online and, and distribute the content that way. Yeah, so that's really fun. Well, I'm really thrilled to be a friend of Sony's. I, I'm, it's just been fun to watch what happened under your watch and, and see Sony become the leader. And it's been, uh, been a great partnership with you and we appreciate all of your support all throughout the years and, and uh, wearing the hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just exactly. being, being the most knowledgeable person about our, uh, all these products and being a, a guide and, and direction for, for the industry as a whole. Oh, thanks so, so thank much. Thank you. Yeah, good deal. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you.